So how did you fare on the market today with the tax rate hike and everything? I'm John Zadar. This is June 15th. It is Wednesday and you're watching On Top and Hot. Now, I like to talk about OTC and penny stocks on this show, and normally I don't have to worry too much about what the Fed has to say because, well, I like to think that the OTC market just pays little heed to that. They're not immune to it. They just don't pay a lot of mind to it. Well, today it seems it was not exactly that way. seems all the markets were frustrated today. But that didn't stop me from finding stocks that had news that were moving today. So I've got an interesting bunch I'm eager to share with you. Let me show you what I got. Unless this is the first video of mine you've seen, you knew exactly where we were going. We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Easy name to remember. You don't want to forget it. This is my go-to site whenever I start my due diligence on an OTC stock. Because FINRA and the SEC update this site, and I don't know of another one, for every OTC stock every day. Why go to Google sorting through decades of old information when you can come here, find what's current the first time? Oh my God, save yourself the headache, save yourself the time. So how did the OTC market fare today? Not bad, better than yesterday actually. We're at $2.3 billion, our average is 2.1. Share volume, we're up to 8.7 billion. Yesterday we were at 7.7 billion. Last week we were under 5 billion. It's been a long time since we've seen the share volume coming up. I mean, a long time, so this is nice. Our trades, we got to still work on that. We're bouncing between 400 and 270,000, and we're right smack dab in the middle right now with 348,000 shares. But I hope to see the increase of share volume continue. That's what our market needs. So the first stock we're going to take a look at here is PLPL, Plan Die Biotechnologies, Inc., now, this company has no news of its own today, no filings. Matter of fact, it doesn't have any news yesterday, last week, or even two weeks ago. Fact is, it has a catalyst, but it's really not its own catalyst, but it's running nonetheless. She finished today at 00095. I know, I don't show you 000 stocks, but come on, that's as close virtually as you can get to double zero. And there is a nice story to tell about this stock. She finished the day at 35%, but she was hotter earlier. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those precious green ticks I tell you to always look for, the verified profile and the transfer agent verified. You want to see these. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting. They tell us that they're a shell company. That means they're not in business. They're not doing anything, so they're not making any money. That's why we don't see any revenues. And when you look at the financials over here, they're right. There is nothing there. There's no money coming in. But to look at their description, they tell us that they're a biotechnology company. And to look at their news, you see they're working with all kinds of drugs. Uh, had an interest in poultry. I don't know why. And uh, they were into cannabis extraction. Now, they've got two pieces of news for this year, but neither one of them have got anything to do with what's going on today. But there was still a lot of excitement around it. How much? Well... Let's look at her volume today. She's normally at 57 million. Today she went up to 696 million. Almost three quarter billion shares. That is a huge jump. So the information wasn't a secret, obviously. It was hard to find, but Twitter was talking about it and it is out there if you do some searching and connecting the dots, which I am gonna do for you. What is the share structure on this company? Oh man. That's outrageous, isn't it? We got 6.8 billion shares in the float. Wow. And they've got 7 billion outstanding. So most of them are down here in the float. That's a lot. Any new disclosures? I don't believe they do, but we're just going to look so you can see. I like to look for 8Ks over here. Uh, nothing recent. All right. So we're going to jump over here to the news. And I'm going to kick this out a little bit. Now, I want you to notice, first off, we have one here for 2022 and one there for 2022. Uh, they resolved some final legacy debt here. And here, Plandi Biotechnology, in non-binding letter of intent to acquire rights to Pura Blood's leukocyte reduction blood filtration system. So it sounds like they're still into something, right? I mean, that was less than a month ago. And we see back here... And this is where I'm leading to, right there back in 2018, 
Uh, they're addressing opportunities in South Africa. But they were looking at poultry. And I see they're looking at poultry quite a few times. And we see cannabis. And we see uh, diabetes. So, I mean, they were kind of all over the place here. I'm not quite sure what they were doing. But now, supposedly, they're doing absolutely nothing. So what the heck are they running for? Well, it really wasn't on them. This came out the other day. And maybe you're aware of this company, TXTM. TXTM came out with this news. Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries uh, completes acquisition of Protex Mobility. Now, I'm just going to read a couple sentences here in case you did miss this. It's been running for three days now, and I think it's got a lot of potential. Uh, this is a cannabis company down in South Africa that has been working to build itself up to be a vertical company. That means from the dirt to the cash register and everything in between. But what's really neat about this company isn't that they just involve themselves with every aspect. It isn't just that they have 5,000 hecka acres, which is like, oh, I don't know. 60,000 acres or something like that. It's not that they've already done uh, a big grow on a thousand plus heck of acres of cannabis. No, they've come up with the new extraction system. You got a lot of companies out there extracting CBDs and all sorts of cannabinoids, but they do it out of a dead plant. They grow the plant, they pull the plant, they dry the plant, they cut it up and they extract it. Well, this company has found a way to do it with live plants. Don't kill them. Do it while they're still green and they're getting better cannabinoids. So there is a lot of potential here in size, territory, because they're in South Africa, which is where they're trying to take over. They got licenses from the government. Everything is approved. They even have permits for research, which we can't get here in America. So it looks really good. But why am I pointing it out to you? Well, I want to point out two more things before I show this to you. This transaction has been a long time in the making. For the past couple of years, we've been focused on building our operations in South Africa and globally, where we have built an extensive infrastructure and global cannabis hemp business. Now, they're talking about the acquisition of Protex Mobility, which is TXTM. So this company came in and bought that company. Well, this piece of news came out in 2020, May 11th. Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries is pleased to announce the successful testing of its proprietary live cannabis plant extraction technology in conjunction with its joint venture partner, the U.S.-based Protext Pharma Inc. TXTM. So, they have been working with cannabis together for a few years here. So this just didn't come out of the blue. They got with this company because they had a relationship with them. But still you're wondering, how does PLPL fit into all of this? Well, in this news press that came out March 4th, 2021, this was a shareholder update letter. They tell us that back in Q2 2020, they had to make a decision. They had made a deal back December 31st 2016 where Protex had bought Plandi Biotechnology, 100% of it. But then they canceled that deal. They scrubbed it, said, no, we're not going to do that. Then they came back and made another deal. But rather than buying the whole company of Plandi Biotechnology, they just bought one of their subsidiaries, which was Cannabis Biosciences. And for that purchase, they gave them 50 million shares, restricted shares. But then they changed that and they took away 40 million and they were left with 10 million shares. And that's the reason they're running. PLPL has 10 million shares of TXTM. So this run that TXTM is on because the South African company just acquired them and now they're all the same business and they're going to have this huge business down in South Africa, this company is making money off of that investment. So let's go see what the charts look like and how much money are they making. So that is a six month, four hour chart for PLPL and we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, that free trading platform I told you you can get just by going over to TD Ameritrade and signing up for a free account. Just keep your account open and voila, you got yourself one heck of a nice trading platform to use, absolutely free. So this is PLPL six month chart and we got a high back here of 0018 and a low not too long after that of 0003. And you can see 
She has hit that low many, many times, but doesn't come any lower. She's been below the 200 most of this time, fought it for about a month and a half, got on top of it for the last month, and then just these last couple of days, she has been tearing it up. Look at that tsunami. That MACD is a big wave just going over the beach. Fire in the sky, folks, right there, loving it. And we are above the third line on the CCI, which is where growth occurs. So this looks really good right now. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she was a triple zero stock back here. That's why it looks like a picket fence. Dee -dee 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 -dee. This could sell a billion shares, and this is what it would do. Just go up and down, up and down, up and down, across the whole day. So this is why I really don't like to target triple zero stocks because they don't move fast. They may be great holds for the day they pop, but I can't ever tell you when they're going to pop normally. But this one did pop right there the last two days. It has taken off. It was sitting right on top of the 200 and then when it had its catalyst, it broke free. Technicals on the 20 day are pretty strong. Everything is still looking good. Now, I want to show you the comparison chart to TXTM. That's their chart for the last 20 days, just like this one. This has been running for three days. This one has been running for two. This one is running on its own value because this is the company that acquired Protex, TXTM. So they're gonna actually be part of that business now. I don't even think they're gonna change the ticker. They haven't mentioned anything about that. So how much is this gonna climb? And that's the question because this stock, as far as I can tell, is following that stock. Well, it's kind of difficult to say. First off, this was a private company that has taken over a public company. Protex has financials, and so does the South African uh, Marijuana Medicinal Company, but it's a private company, so we have no clue what those numbers are. So until they tell us, it's very difficult to say what the stock is worth because we don't know what the company's worth. But <laughs> investors on the OTC aren't really bothered by that. They like to presume the best. I see that very often. So this could continue to run very easily. As this runs, this is probably gonna run. All right, let's zoom in on the five minute view on this stock. So there's your two days, very steady. I mean, you can see it's very steady. I'm gonna grab a line here just so we can see. I'm gonna grab it from the very bottom right there. And you can see right there. You see how it's hitting, hitting, hitting. It did break through right there, but you can see over and over again, that was its channel line. So it's been running at an even keel up. In the first day, she ran from, uh, it's, let me see, it looks like she started the day at triple zero five and she ended the day at triple zero seven. So you're looking at, oh, I don't know, about 40% gains the first day. And then this morning she started off at triple zero seven. She did hit a high of double zero one one. So you're going from seven to 11, which is almost 50% this day too. And she finished the day at 35%. She's got a heavy drop there at the end of the day. It is a big drop. It's bigger than anything else that's broken through this channel. And let's just take a look. Go back to the 20-day, one-hour view. See if there is a uh, SMA. Yeah, there is, but it's not sitting on it. It broke it. It's come through, and there's no more SMAs. you got to come all the way down here to 0006 to hit the 20, or over here on the five-day, you'd have to come down to 0007 which is where she would probably go to the next strongest SMA on any one of those time charts. So she's probably going to end up down here the way she looks. Technicals are very weak right now. The four hour and the one hour really looking good. But on the five minute, well, the end of the day, she took away all of that heat and cooled things off. So it's very difficult to say looking at the chart, but there is a lot of projected heat onto TXTM right now, and this one has got 10 million shares invested into it. And really, you can figure out what they're worth. They have no revenues of their own, PLPL. The only money they're gonna be making is off their investments, and I don't know if they have any other investments. But this one, 10 million, you can multiply it times the price of TXTM, which is, uh, what are they going for right now? I think it's just over a penny. 
Yeah, just over a penny, so 10 million. What's that, $100,000 or something like that? And I don't know what they got it for back in 2016, was it, that they got these shares? They were cheap back then, weren't they? So they've made a heck of a profit. So I would keep my eye on both these stocks, TX, TM, and PLPL. Uh, both are doing very well. I would presume they're going to continue to grow because there's not a lot else to look at right now. And people are buzzing about this stock. And this one has just latched on to this one's shirt tails. All right, let's go take a look at another stock that was in the news today. All right, we're going to have to hurry and look at this stock because it's about ready to leave Pennyville. Boop, boop. <laughs> this is Sidu, ticker S-I-D-U, Sida Space Incorporated. She is on the NASDAQ, but she is a penny stock, barely. Any stock under $5 is a penny stock, regardless what market it's on. And she finished the day at $4.68 with a whopping 225% gains today. Now, she really has two catalysts, and I don't know if everybody's seen both of them. She had news come out today. Big news, great news. I'm sure everybody saw that. But she also had a filing come out just a few days ago, which is really good. And I'm going to share both of them with you. Now, as you've probably guessed, the company is involved with space, but we've got no description here. So I've jumped on over here to a news press. We got a description here, site of space located in, of course, Cape Canaveral, Florida, operates from a 35,000 square foot manufacturing, assembly integration and testing facility focused on vertically integrated space as a service solutions, <laughs> including end to end satellite support. And the more we read, and I will read you some more, basically folks, they do everything. They make parts, they do maintenance, and they're involved in lots of space programs. And more DD will expound on that history. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Really good. She went from 3.5 million to over 100 million shares. You are talking over 30 times her normal volume. Share structure. Oh, that's right. I did look this one up already for you. They have a outstanding share count of almost 17 million. And the unrestricted shares is where you get your float. I'm sure I found one that is close under 7 million. Folks, that is a seriously low float. And when I show you the news here and you see what this company is all about, with that float of $7 million, you may want to consider looking at this company a little bit deeper. What are her financials? Well, that's where it's a little concerning. It looks good initially. At the end of last year, we bring down those three zeros. They tell us that they did $1.4 million, which isn't bad. But they had to pay $1.7 million to make that. So they went over a quarter million in debt. That's not how you stay in business. But the news today is probably going to change that in a very big way. And disclosures. Right, this is the first place I want to show you. I love to come to disclosures and look for 8Ks. These are eggs, folks. You don't know what's in that egg until it cracks open and you look. And you never know until you peek in these. So we're going to look at this 8K right here. And check what I found. On June 3rd, 2022, Sidus Space Incorporated and Craig Technical Consulting, also known as CTC, entered into a debt forgiveness agreement pursuant to which CTC agreed to forgive the entire unpaid principal amount of $1.6 million, including all the accrued interest. Can you believe that? Yes, this uh, investor here, just forgave a debt of $1.6 million and the entire interest on top of that. I have no clue why, but that ain't bad news. I'll tell you that much. Now, speaking of news, let's take a look at what came out today. Dun, 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 dun. All right, they ain't going to bring it up. I've already got it for us. Thank God for that, right? This came out today, June 15, 2022. Cytus Space, a space as a service company focused on mission critical hardware manufacturing, multidisciplinary engineering services, satellite design, production, launch planning, mission operations, and in-orbit support is proud to announce that it is part of the Collins Aerospace Team, which was awarded NASA's Exploration Extra Vehicular Activity Services contract. 
The Exivas contract has a potential value of $3.5 billion to 2034 with a 10-year base contract plus two option years. NASA awarded the contract to Collins Aerospace and Axiom Space. Imagine that, folks. Talk about job security. A 10-year contract worth $3.5 billion. You think this will help their revenues? Probably. Over the last 10 years, Citus has been manufacturing space hardware and participating in every major space project. Wow. So you can see they are in a good group now. They are with a company called Collins Aerospace, which NASA gave a huge contract to. So there is a lot of trust. There is a lot of belief in these companies and they brought in this company to be with them. So Saidu has definitely got good news. Saidu has been forgiven a debt. Saidu is probably going to make great revenues with this company, which is going to change the entire landscape for their financials and going to help the company. So let's go take a look at that chart and see if it dared go over 225% or was that its absolute high? Well, that's not only the six-month, four-hour chart for Saidu, it's all the chart. I mean, that's everything that there is. I've got to presume that this is when she came on the market. Now, there's no news to look at over at the OTC market for this NASDAQ stock. I'd have to go out and do some more research. But being the first day that it came on, so I presume we hit $30 here, and it fell fast all the way down to about 11 bucks. Went sideways roughly for a few months, took another dip, and has been on a slow decline ever since. Hit a low bubble here of $1.25, got up off of that barely, has been going sideways until today. Now we had a big spike of volume there where she actually poked the 200, no clue what it is, more research, and then today, and you can see there is no volume anywhere else. Those are the two spots we got volume, and the technicals are screaming. 20-day, one-hour view, what does that show us? Well, <laughs> we can see that her 285, 225 high was at the end of the day. She climbed all day and hit that high after market. On the one hour, her technicals are still blazing, folks. They are blazing hot. Five day, five minute. All right, she took off early here at about $1.35 at uh, 7 in the morning. She took off and to the bell, she got to about 290 roughly. So that's over 100%. Now remember folks, you can trade NASDAQ stocks pre-market, after market. You don't need any special permissions. There's no uh, special criteria to follow. The only thing you do have to remember and do differently is change your day trade to an extended trade. It can be day plus extended or good till canceled plus extended or just extended, EXT. But if you don't put that in there, it'll just ignore your order. So you can trade in there and you can grab those profits early and get out at the bell. No one says you have to stay in. And looking at this, I can see how most people thought this run was over. It started to fall very quickly, hit the 50, came up a little bit, and then crossed over the 50 and dropped. This looked like it was going to go, and I can imagine a lot of people sold right there. But boom, streak of lightning came in and shot this thing right on up again, and it continues to climb after market hours. Now we see we had a crossover here. The MACD is falling very hard right there but the price is climbing. That's called a divergence. As the MACD is falling, the price is still climbing. That shows a lot of strength here, folks. Uh, the RSI is currently falling and the CCI is holding strong. Right now, it looks strong and I think it is. I get the feeling this is gonna continue to run tomorrow for sure, maybe a few days. This is a huge contract for a company that needs the money, right? They were running at a deficit last year. And no matter what slice of pie they get of this $3 billion, there's only three companies. Three companies. Any slice of that pie is a huge slice. So this looks really good for them. I would expect this continue to run. Uh, right now she's at five dollars and eighty-eight cents. Well, she dipped a little to five sixty-four. So she's not even a penny stock anymore. She was when I first started showing it to you. So 
even though she's not a penny stock, I think she's got a lot more gains to give. And no one says you have to stay in long. Put in your $100 or $500, watch it go up, take your money out, and go back to Pennyville. That's okay. All right, let's go take a look at the last stock I got for us tonight. Last stock we're taking a look at is ticker SRNW Stratus Renewable Core. Interesting stock. Uh, there was information that came out about this stock today, but it's information that really isn't accessible for most of us. There were two pieces of information, actually, and they both come from the same source, as far as I can tell you. I'm going to share that information with you, where they got that information, and how you can get it, too. So SRNW finished today at $1.40 with only 16% gains. She did have a bigger punch earlier today, but she kind of fizzled out. It was that kind of day. She's on the pink tier and current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but I don't see a verified profile here. But I do expect that to come soon because there are things in the workings right now. She is a shell company. That means she has no business. She is completely hollow. Now, I'll tell you right from the start, this is a George Sharp play. George Sharp, he's a lot like Karen Courier. If you don't know either one of them, I'll give you a brief history here. These sort of people like to save companies that have fallen off of the open market into the expert market and have no management to fix them. So they're going to end up dying there. So what these people do is they go to the court and they petition them for custodialship of these companies, which means that they want to take control of it and get them back on the market. And if nobody comes forward and fights for control, they end up with custody of their company. But it's their responsibility responsibility to clean up all the dirty laundry whatever it costs and they've got to pay for it so they do all the filings take care of everything get it paint get it on the market it is now like a brand new house waiting for somebody to move in and that's what they're looking for a private company that wants to go public and they'll do a reverse merger with them so that's what's going on here right now so as I said there were two pieces of information today what was the relative volume wrapped around them <laughs> the numbers aren't very big, but it is over 100%. It is double. We went from 41,000 to almost 110,000 shares. I know, it's very little volume right now. Share structure, well, at least that's good news. Look at that. We have 15.5 million in the float. So we have a low float here. No financials, disclosures, anything new over there. Uh... Just their most recent filing, a 10Q, which is a quarterly, 10K would be an annual. And if you want to know anything or everything about the company, just jump into those. They tell you everything, and I'm not kidding, everything, even the bad stuff. And you won't find the bad stuff in press releases, will ya? Now, they don't have any news, right? That's what I told you. I had to go over to Twitter to get my information. And here it is. Thanks to Cold Hard Cash for posting this information. Thank you, my friend. Now, I don't know for absolute fact because he doesn't tell us, but I do believe the two pieces of information he's taken screenshots of are documents from the courthouses. Now, this information isn't released in press releases. You can get it online, and most of the time you can get it for free. You go to the Secretary of State's office. There's one in Delaware. There's one in Nevada. Every state has one. And each of these companies have registered in one of those states. So you can see how that could be a hassle, having 50 accounts. Some of them you actually have to make accounts, and some of them you even have to pay to be a part of. So it could be a lot of extra work doing it that way. Or you could do what I did for a while, come over here to Filings RE. For the record, I'm not associated with them. I don't get anything if you come here. But this is about $40 a month or $400 a year. But I got to tell you, folks, the information is critical and could make you a ton of money. There is lots of information here. There's the average information you can get. They will tell you about uh, splits, forward splits, reverse splits. You get to know that as soon as they actually make any mention of it. You know when a company is changing tiers. Now, that can make you a ton of money. This will let you know when a company is coming from the expert market onto the pink market or even pink limited. It doesn't matter. Once they get off the expert market, these companies are jumping thousands, tens of thousands of percent. Lots of money to be made, and there is no notification anywhere online about that. But you can get it here. And they also have the court dockets all sorts of court dockets whatever they're involved with if it's in court it's on a docket it comes out and you can read it here love that information and there is even more beyond that 
And that's what we've got over here, our court dockets, at least as far as I can tell. This first one here, George Sharp as custodian of Stratos, is respectively requesting to cancel all of the restricted shares, all of them, 219,673,603. Look here, folks. 219,673,603. All the restricted shares. All that's left is the float. That's all that's left. I'm not quite sure how that works out, but there is a purpose to this madness. The other court docket gives us some more information that's really good. There is presently pending a potential reverse merger acquisition into Stratos, which could provide great benefit to Stratos and its shareholders. This potential reverse merger acquisition into Stratos is at least partially dependent on the court's cancellation of these restricted shares. So we have got a peak here. Soon as we see a filing or a news press come out saying that these shares are canceled, we know that this deal is moving forward. There's going to be a reverse merger. Now, I don't know how all the share stuff is going to work out, but I know it's a contingency. So when we see a filing that says the shares are being canceled, you know that deal is probably going to happen and hasn't happened yet. So that would be a great time to be getting into this company because you know the wait isn't going to be that long. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. Not your everyday average chart we look at. This is SRNW six month, four hour chart with the low on this side of the chart of 10 cents, riding the 200. She did get above it really strong, hit a high bubble here of $1.85, has fallen back and been sitting right here on an even keel pretty much of $1.40. Had a dip and then jumped today with that fresh information. Technicals, we got a crossover on the MACD imminent and it looks like she's approaching the signal line. Could get a nitro boost off that. The other two uh, RSI and CCR are starting to decline and get a bit weaker. 20 day, one hour view. All right, she's been going sideways, up and down, up and down, just riding that 50 day. And when she finally decided to leave it, she crashed. Hit a low here of $1.10, had a little bit of a retreat yesterday and then today took off. One hour technicals are warm, definitely warm, but not hot. Five day, five minute. So there's your recovery yesterday off of that low bubble, which went from $1.10 up to $1.20. So she grabbed 10 cents. Then this morning she opened up at like $1.18 and went to $1.58 in 10 minutes. That's about a 25% gain. Not very big, but folks, that is a huge jump in five minutes. Then you had a second one. That's 10 minutes. So I'm sure a lot of people thought this was going to continue to grow. Me. <laughs> She took a strong dip, but she seriously did hold most of her gains most of the day. And then about the time the rate hike was announced on TV by Bloomberg, this thing took a dump. But you know, I can see here she's got a triangle. Let me grab my line here. I can see she's got a triangle forming here, right there, which normally means a decisive moment is coming. But look, folks, these technicals are as flat as you can virtually get flat right under the signal line, dead center of both flat in the center, flat. So this shows no activity except that it's sitting there on the 50 day SMA, actually just under it, in a triangle it needs to break out of. It could go up, it could go down. But really folks, what we're looking for isn't where the price is gonna go, but where is that filing that cancels all those restricted shares? Once those shares get canceled, we are pretty much promised there's going to be a reverse merger. That is the contingency. So once you see that filing, I would then zoom in on SRNW. Look at this company closely. If they have any information about the other company, jump into it, do your DD. This could be a nice entry point just after that filing comes out. So we've got some stocks there that you're going to be wanting to keep your eye on, folks. Some that are following other stocks and some that just are waiting for things to occur. Now, when I say put them on your watch list, I mean that. Don't just be writing them on paper. Put them on a watch list on some platform where you can see the volume moving, the price moving, because when you see that volume kick up, all the DD that you've been doing on that company isn't going to go to waste because you missed the run. You'll see it. Remember folks, a watch list is as important as DD because it is the backup to all of your DD. Why waste it? 
Remember folks, the more you know and the more you put on your watch list, the more you're gonna grow. See you folks.